Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this seamless diamond pattern in designer version two. Now I'm using the iPad version of the app. However, if you're on the desktop version, the process is the same. So as long as you know where your tools are located, you should be able to follow along. I do want to note though, some of the tools I'm using are not available in version one of the app for either iPad or desktop. Let's get started. I have a 4,000 pixel canvas set to 300 DPI. I find this size fits my needs for the majority of my print on demand sites. And since I'm working with flat vectors, I can easily size up and size down and export at different sizes if need be. This is also going to provide me with a number of options for the size motif that I want to be able to tile evenly into my canvas. I'm going to create my diamond shape using a stroke and no fill. And I've set that stroke to 20 pixels. I can always change that later. In fact, I'll show you how you can easily do that once the design is created. What I want to do is grab my shape tool. So I'm gonna grab the diamond and just start dragging out. And I'll hold my finger down so that my width and height are exactly the same. Now I want to create a motif that evenly divides into my canvas. When it comes to creating geometric designs like this, it makes it much easier to create the overall pattern. I have several options ranging from small to large. I'm going to go with 1000 pixels. So I want to make sure that that layer is selected. I'll go to my transform panel. I'm going to make sure that the lock is engaged and I'll just change one of the sides to 1000. Now I'm going to use this diamond shape to create the rest. I'll hold my finger down and duplicate it. And I can either manually drag this or use my transform studio. I'm going to do that. With that duplicate selected, I'm going to move it up on the Y or vertical axis 100 pixels. Now, because I'm going bottom to top, I need to go to my Y axis and key in minus 100. From here, I no longer need the transform panel. I just need to make sure that this stays selected and I'll power duplicate it until I have all of the shapes that I want in place. All right, again, I want my final motif to be 1000 pixels. So I'm going to use everything inside of that original diamond. And I'm going to use the shape builder tool to remove everything else. So with my move tool, I'm going to drag across and select all of my diamond layers. I'll grab my shape builder tool and I want to make sure it's on subtract and I have freehand selected. That's going to allow me to just start drawing across everything outside of that original diamond. And you can see I'm getting these white and red stripes. And as soon as I lift my pencil, everything I just drew over disappears. Now at this point, if I wanted to, I could expand these strokes into fills and I can combine them with the add function and the geometric tools, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is with all of these selected, I'll go up the top and I'm going to group them as a set of strokes. So I'm going to call this final diamond. And I'll show you a little bit later once the design is in place, how you can make changes to this very easily. I'm also not going to fill in this diamond shape at the top just yet. I'm going to do that using the vector flood fill tool once everything is in place. And again, I'll explain why I do that once everything is done. I'm ready to start tiling my motif. And this is going to work very much like the wave design that I created in the last pattern tutorial I shared. I'll link that above and in the description below. We're going to use this diamond shape to create the first two rows. Those two rows combined are going to be our final motif, which will tile all the way down the canvas. So I have snapping on and I'm going to drag this up off the canvas so that a quarter of it is on the canvas and everything else is inside. The reason that I'm starting outside the canvas is if I were to start here because of how the diamond shape is created, I would have gaps that I don't want. So with snapping on, it's going to tell me exactly where I want it to be because I'll get this green and red line as soon as it's in place. Now, of course, a 1000 pixel motif is evenly divided into a 4000 pixel canvas four times. But because we're starting off the canvas and we need to complete it on the other side, we're actually going to start out with five total diamonds on our first row. So I'll select that diamond shape. I'm going to hold my finger down and duplicate it. I'm going to use the transform panel to move the first one and then use power duplicate after that. So I want to move this 1000 pixels, the entire size of the diamond shape on the X or horizontal axis. 
Now, because I'm going to the right, I'm going to key in plus 1,000. From here, I can just hold my finger down and keep duplicating it all the way across. And again, there's our five diamond shapes. So that's our first row. We're going to use this row to create the second one. And that second row is going to tuck itself into these little spaces created by the diamonds. Before I do anything else, I'm going to drag across and select these five. I'll go to my layers and I'm going to group them and I'll call this long row. And you'll see why in a moment. I'll hold my finger down and duplicate it. Now again, I want these to tuck into the spaces between the first diamond shapes. So what I'm going to do is go to my transform panel and I want to move down on the Y axis, half the size of my shape. So I'll key in plus 500. Then I want to move to the right on the X or horizontal axis, again, half the size of my shape. So I'll go to the X position and key in plus 500. And that's going to tuck that nicely into that shape. Now you can see I'm left with an extra one here that's hanging off the canvas. You can leave that as is, but I actually like to clean them up. So I'm going to take that diamond and just delete it. And I'll change the name of this one to short row. All right, so we have our first and second row and those two combined are going to create our final motif. So I'm going to group those up and call this final. Now from here, I don't need to move left to right on the canvas, I need to tile down. So I'm going to hold my finger down and duplicate that. I'll use my transform panel for the very first one. So we're going to go on the Y axis or the vertical axis down 1000, the entire size of the shape. And from here, I can just power duplicate it until I complete the design. All right, now just like when we created our first rows, I have an extra row here. And in this case, it's this short row on that final one that I created. Again, you can keep it in place, but I just like to clean up my canvas. So I'm just going to delete that. Now at this point, I have a tileable design. I could test this and export it and load it onto one of my print on demand sites. But I want to show you a few ways that you can make adjustments to this now that everything is in place. The first is that you can select your groups here. And again, these are all strokes. I can go to my stroke panel and because I have the group layer selected, it's showing zero pixels, but let's say I want to make these thinner. I'm going to tap on the width and change that to 10. And that's going to make all of the strokes that are selected 10 pixels. I can also change the color if I want. So I can pick this pink or this orange. I'm gonna move it back to this red. You can also use this selection to add the diamond shapes that I didn't add previously. And here's why I do this. The first thing I'm gonna do is fill them in. So I have all of my layers selected. I'll choose my vector flood fill tool. Now it's very important that you select the tool first and then pick your fill color. I'm going to go with the red I was already using and I'll just tap inside these diamond shapes. And if you're going to fill in the ones on the edges here, just make sure that you fill in the corresponding one on the other side, because just like with the original diamonds, they complete one another. All right, now when I open up my layers panel, I'm going to deselect my original strokes, those original diamond shapes. And you can see that I'm left with curve layers wherever I added a diamond shape. Now I could leave all of these separate, but in this case, there's no reason for that. So I'm going to select my move tool and I'm going to add them all together. So I have one overall curve shape. Now again, I can go in here and I can select my fill and change the color. I can also with them selected, go to my contour tool. And if I drag to the left, I can make those smaller. This is a lot easier because I didn't embed them in these layers. They're separate, which means I can treat them separately. So I could also add a stroke to this. Let's say I add that red that I already used and I can adjust that diamond shape however I want. So I've brought it back to the original fill diamond shape and I want to show you how you can quickly test your pattern before you export it. What I want to do is add a new artboard. So I'm going to go up to the documents menu and choose artboards. I want it to be the same size as my document, so I'll leave that drop down as is and just hit plus. That's going to add another artboard here in my layers. I'm going to select the overall artboard layer 
of the pattern tile I just created. And it's really important that you check the artboard layer and not everything underneath it. I'm going to go to my assets and I want to add it by tapping on the burger menu and choosing add asset from selection. Now I've already added it here, so I'm going to use that. I'll just go ahead and select the artboard I just created, go to my gradient tool, and I'm gonna tap on that asset and set as fill. Now what this has done is created a bitmap fill. So this is pixels, they're not vectors. And that's really important to keep in mind because if you plan to use your pattern tile as a vector, you do not want to export this one. But what this is going to allow you to do is use these handles to scale down and up. You can also move around to make sure that your, your pattern is tiling correctly. And in this case, it is. Now here's another reason that you don't want to export this. You can see that I moved this around, which means that I've offset it. And I'm going to run into problems because this isn't going to tile correctly. So whenever you export, you want to make sure that you're exporting your original pattern dial, not the tester. So if I want to export this, I can go up to my burger menu and choose export. For area, I can choose artboard one and go from there. And that's it. That's how you can quickly create a seamless diamond pattern in designer using the built-in diamond shape and vector flood fill tool. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, or if there's a particular pattern you'd like to see me create here in a tutorial, let me know that as well. If you've enjoyed my teaching style, you can find my full length classes either on Skillshare or my own learning site, The Creator Collage. You'll find links to both below. Now I'm always adding new tutorials here on my YouTube channel, so be on the lookout. But in the meantime, you might wanna check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.